A cultural fear that haunts today's society are shootings in schools. The first recorded school shooting in U.S. history was in 1840 at the University of Virginia. However, the modern fear dawned in 1999 at Columbine High School. Shootings at schools are now becoming a more common occurrence, and with that, our fears intensify. When parents send their children to school, they're putting their safety in the hands of teachers and staff. And a lack of control makes any risk feel more threatening. Parents who have lost a child in such a tragedy place their faith and trust in the school system, trust that was violated. When there's a school shooting, it tends to get a lot of coverage from the media, and it triggers a high emotional balance, which causes us to consider their likelihood, further magnifying our fears. Students who have witnessed this kind of terror more than likely end up not wanting to go back to school because they are worried it might happen again. What, what do you feel about what happened to your school today? I was like, I was really scared of what happened. Like, I don't, I don't want to go to Brindle anymore because of what happened. Because it, I'm afraid it's going to happen again. He like lifted up like a little black pistol. <laughs> and, um, and, and like, I just thought it was like an airsoft gun or something. So I was like, I was like, hey, like, what up? And I turned around and I started walking the other way. <laughs> he has a gun, he has a gun, and ran right into our house. He hasn't slept at his home, fearing the worst. It's always fine during the day, but when it gets to, when it gets dark again, it, you kind of get this eerie feeling that it's all going to happen over again. Hey, everybody! Bye. <laughs> So what causes someone to commit such a heartless act? It is never fully understood, and there is never only one single reason for it. It's an accumulation of negative experiences that have pushed someone too far off the edge, that they feel the only solution is murder. On May 23, 2014, Elliot Roger, a 22-year-old student at UCSB, stabbed his two roommates and their friend to death, shot and killed four others and injured 14 before turning the gun on himself. Hey, Elliot Roger here. I'm up in the hills in Montecito right now. It's truly a beautiful day. But, as I've always said, a beautiful environment is the darkest hell if you have to experience it all alone. You know? I feel so invisible as I walk through my college because none of the girls there pay attention to me. I don't know why you girls hate me so much. Whenever I drive through this college town called Isla Vista, which is just right next to UCSB, I see so many hot, beautiful blonde girls walking with absolute stupid, obnoxious looking douchebags. Why do you girls give those guys a chance, but not me? I deserve it more. I'm not allowed to enjoy life in this world all because I've been cast out. No one likes me. No one accepts me. Tomorrow is the day of retribution. You denied me a happy life. I hate all of you. Eight months after the murders, the Santa Barbara Sheriff's Office released a report on Roger. The investigation addressed his history of mental illness, as well as his interest in Nazis. His internet history was also revealed. It included searches of torture devices, shooting ranges, and he even looked up how to kill someone with a knife. In his room, Roger left behind a printed copy of his 137-page autobiographical manifesto titled My Twisted World which showcased his life story and reasoning as to why he committed the murders. Roger was found to be mentally ill and received therapy and psychiatric care from the age of nine up until his death. He struggled with depression, anger, jealousy, suicidal thoughts, narcissism, and basic social skills. Michael Carneal was just 14 years old when he opened fire at Heath High School in Kentucky on December 1, 1997. He was known as the class clown to many, but to others, he wasn't so funny. He was constantly made fun of and pushed around, 
Towards the end of his first semester in high school, someone wrote in the school newspaper that he was gay, which caused him to become more aggressive, and students even began to label him as a bully. He endured many more weeks of abuse, and his personality began to change. He warned everyone that he had a plan, and that something big was going to happen. But no one took him seriously. The Monday after Thanksgiving, he brought five guns and 1,000 rounds of ammunition to school and started shooting at a prayer group, killing three and injuring five. Absorbed in their prayers, no one sees Michael Carneal enter with a large package. No one sees him calmly stick an earplug in each ear. It is not to temptation. And no one sees him pull out a 22 caliber gun until it is too late. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. 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 Same time tomorrow, guys. Yeah. And as we started walking away, I started hearing popping noises. Possibly the most notorious school shooting took place in April of 1999 when Eric Harris and Dylan Klebold opened fire at Columbine High School, killing 12 students and a teacher before committing suicide together in the library. In the months leading up to the shooting, their behavior was rather disturbing, but it seemed as though their behavior wasn't disturbing enough for someone to help them. The boys made a short film for class titled Hitman for Hire, a film about outcasts hiring hitmen to kill their bullies, which raised questions and concerns with teachers. People are always making fun of me. I don't like it. I need some help. Ooh! No, you goddamn little bitch ass piece of shit! Do not! God damn it. Go ahead. Look, I don't care what you say. If you ever touch him again, I will freaking kill you. I'm gonna pull out a goddamn shotgun and blow your damn head off. Do you understand, you little worthless piece of crap? Eric and Dylan worked together at Blackjack Pizza, and their behavior was rather destructive. They used dry ice to make and detonate small bombs, and they were constantly playing with fire behind the store once allowing a flame to grow so big that the fire department had to put it out. Students in Dylan and Eric's bowling class told reporters that they would shout Heil Hitler every time they rolled a good ball. Eric admired Hitler and his support for natural selection. He wrote in his journal about how natural selection should be put in place to kill off dumb people. I hate this school. Yeah, me too. We'll get our revenge. Kick natural selection up a few notches. Unlike Dylan, Eric was bullied. Although Dylan wasn't bullied, his friends believed that something was bothering him. He wrote in his journal about having suicidal thoughts, stating that he hated his life. Dylan was described by many to be a follower. He always wanted to be there for Eric, so he gave in to his manipulation. What do you think happened to your friend Dylan? just he's a follower he just got taken into Eric Eric had anger management issues one day his friend Brooks Brown was late in giving Eric a ride to school Brooks told him to find another ride and Eric got angry he broke Brooks windshield with a rock and terrorized the Brown household by putting firecrackers in the windowsill he also wrote on his website about wanting to kill Brooks Eric also suffered from depression and was taking the drug Luvox in correlation with his anger management therapy the medication caused him to have thoughts of suicide and homicide. It's been theorized that Luvox side effects contributed to what happened. However, friends of Eric told reporters that he had stopped taking the drug shortly before the rampage. If this was true, this could have triggered an even more violent reaction as stopping any antidepressant suddenly enhances the negative side effects. In January of 1998, Eric and Dylan broke into a van and stole electrical equipment. They were arrested on felony charges of criminal trespass and theft. While apologetic and reformed with police, Eric and Dylan were now bonded by a shared rage. 
an accumulation of circumstances that brought them together to acquire the means to carry out such an attack. My wrath from January's incident will be godlike. Not to mention our revenge in the commons. This is what we always wanted to do. This is awesome. Let's do it. I'm still mixed up in my head. I'm thinking there's seniors and they're pulling a prank, but they're angry. The moment that it became real, all of a sudden where it was not a prank, this wasn't a joke that was happening, was when the shooters came into the library and they were immediately shooting off their guns. One of them says uh, to the other, get anybody else with a, with a white baseball cap on. A lot of jocks wore, wore white baseball caps. I had one on that day. Get up! Everybody with white hats, stand up! As soon as he said that, I'm underneath the table. Very scared, I take off my cap and I put it underneath my shirt. They came underneath a, a table where someone was and said peekaboo and then shot him. Peekaboo. They treated it like it was a game. It wasn't a game, it was real. Eric and Dylan hated the injustice of their school and the environment. Eric was always so upset that many people at his school left him out of so many fun activities. Considering how many times they were involved with the police, their school assignments, their videotapes, and their questionable behavior. Someone could have stepped in to get them the help that they needed, and maybe even prevented this massacre from happening. But no one did anything. Which is one of the many reasons why these kinds of attacks happen. Try to hit the tree. I want to see what a slug does to the tree. Oh! <laughs> That's a fucking slug! Imagine that in someone's fucking brain. All shooters have motives. There is always reasoning behind these attacks. Signs and motives may not always be visible, but they are there. We are going to make things right. We'll be heroes. Heil Hitler. I can hear him now. If only we would have reached them sooner or, or found this tape. If only we would have searched their rooms. If only we would have asked the right questions. Too late. 